Well, folks, that magical time of year is coming quickly. No, I'm not talking about deer season. We're talking about getting our fall food plots planted. I like that almost as much as the hunting. In fact, I probably like it more. But, you know, we're a month away from starting our fall food plot program here in Upper Michigan, and a lot of you people will be right behind us. And it's coming quickly. But you know what else is coming quickly, and I'm going to warn you. All the pro staffers, all the sponsored pages, all the YouTube stars, all the social media stars, plant this. You got to plant that. Hey, check out my new sponsor, so-and-so seed company. You got to plant their stuff, even though I've never once planted their stuff. Plant their stuff. Plant this. Two years ago, last year, you were planting this. Now you got to plant this because this sucks now, okay? I mean, I've seen it. Four years ago, we want you to plant this. Two years ago, we want you to plant this. Now I want you to plant this. How do you take some of these people serious? I mean, they change their mind like they change underwear. So we talked about uh, a couple of months ago doing some classes. And I don't know if I'd really consider this a class. But we're going to do a series of videos to try to help clear the air and answer a lot of questions you may have on what would work best in your soil conditions, your planting equipment, um, your region. We're going to go through all the products on the Northwood shelf free of sponsorship, free of pro staff. It's just going to be us talking to you directly, what we would recommend, why we would recommend, what situation we would recommend. And whether you plant Northwood's products or not, hopefully this helps you with your 2023 food plot program we're going to start today with clovers. Now here at Northwoods, we sell three varieties of clover. Now I'm not talking about the seed. I'm talking about uh, an annual clover. A bi and I, I don't know if I'm butchering this word and I'm sorry. I think it's pronounced biennial. I thought it was biannual, but it's, it looks like biennial. Sorry. <laughs> and a perennial. Okay. And we'll discuss all three. We're going to discuss the recommendations, the situations we would recommend them. We're going to discuss uh, how I really like these in these small kill plots. And we're going to talk about how we recommend planting them. Now, there's a lot of different ways to plant them. I'll just give you what we recommend and what we do here when we plant clover. Now, one thing to keep in mind, folks, we're not going to talk about frost seeding. We're not going to talk about what we call rain seeding. If you miss that frost seeding window in the spring, we're not going to talk about that spring planting of clover with oats. Uh, that obviously we'll discuss in 2024 at the appropriate time. Today we're just going to discuss trying to establish a clover plot in the fall coming soon. Now I think probably one of the best ways to get a weed free clover plot is to get a good weed killing, uh, take care of your soil, plant it in the fall because it gives that clover plot a chance to get the root system developed and then hit the ground running ahead of the weeds in the spring. Fall is a phenomenal time to start a clover plot. So annual clovers, what does that mean? Annual clovers are a one year clover. Okay, their lifespan is over the course of a year. If you plant it this year, it's more than likely not gonna return in 2024. There is, however, crimson clover is what we sell. Uh, we don't sell, there's there's varieties, there's bursine clover and there's blonza clover. We have in, in our white tail driven solutions blends, we have some Balanza clover as a food component as well as a nitrogen building component. Uh, I personally use Bersim in our garden. Uh, one of my favorite plow down mixes is a spring planting right behind the brassica. The following, the following spring, I like to do oats at about 50 pounds an acre. I like to do a Bersim clover at about uh, 15 pounds an acre and then uh, forage peas at about 50 pounds an acre. It's good deer food, but it's great organic matter builder, and it's great deer food for the summer. Nitrogen building, but I haven't done this blend in a few years, but Bersim is a great annual clover. We like to use that a lot. Um, but the one that we sell here a lot is crimson clover. Now, depending on where you are in the country, crimson clover is an annual, but if you get south of let's just say maybe the upper part of Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, and those parts south, most of the time the crimson can survive the winter and start to flower out the following year. 
And a lot of people I've talked to down south said they can create a perpetual food plot with crimson because, you know, you've got that beautiful crimson flower. It turns brown, maybe black when it dies, and then they mow it and it's reseeding. And I've talked to a couple of people that it can reseed their crimson clover just by mowing. Now here in Upper Michigan, I've not had a lot of years where it survived the winter. We actually had a mild winter this year, if you can consider <laughs> winter up here mild, but we didn't have the, the long, pro, the prolonged minus zero temperatures. And our crimson that we seeded last fall in with some of our brassicas and in with some of our cereal grains, even in our garden, um, it survived. So we could use that again this year, albeit we will till it under for our fall plantings but we did get it to survive this year. But crimson is considered an annual clover and it produces a lot of organic nitrogen when it's growing. Biennials. Most of our red clovers here are biennials. We treat them for the most part like an annual. I like, when we started messing with red clovers, we were putting it in with our green forage blend, our fall forage, our fall forage sandy soil blends, our green blends in our food plot program. Now we don't add them to the blends, we just come back and seed them uh, once the seeds in the ground, the bigger seeds in the ground. But what we'll do is we'll plant it in the fall with those blends. It does produce uh, some food and the deer will eat it because it grows so fast. But what we really, we really like about it is it comes back the following spring. Great protein content in the spring for those does, great protein content for those bucks that are trying to put weight back on trying to build their skeletal system, trying to build their antlers that summer. Now, one of the things we'll also use, and we'll really hit that on the situation um, discussion, is if you're trying to start a food plot, uh, I'm sorry, if you're trying to start a clover food plot on your property and the soil isn't ready for one of our good quality perennial white clover blends, we do a lot of red clover. You know, if your soil's not ready, that red clover may work just fine. So that's what the red is. Now, one of the things, and we're gonna discuss this in a second, why we don't mix them all together. One of the things about red clover, it's used a lot in the alfalfa production. I'm sorry, it's used a lot in hay production because it gets tall and stemmy. Now we've, we've mowed our clover uh, behind the house, the food plot here, our red clover, we've mowed it twice now. But what we're trying to do is knock the rye down, but what we're also trying to do is encourage a lot of robust growth with that red clover. We want a great big root system, a lot of nitrogen on those roots, because we're going to plow that under with our tiller in late July, and that's where our brassica is going to go. So we keep it knocked down about eight inches, uh, maybe six inches, but we do mow the red and we're encouraging that growth. So a lot of nitrogen is produced for the brassica crop. A perennial, we only use in our clover blends, white ladino perennial clovers. We've got four different varieties. It started out with three back in 2010. And we found one more that we really liked, survives the frost, deer really smash it. And so now we only use four. We do not mix all of them together. I think there's a time and a place for each one, but you know, we get asked a lot, how long will my clover blend last? My clover food plot, how long is that gonna last? A lot of that's got to do with your soil condition, you know, how much input you're putting in on it, uh, whether it's a liquid fertilizer or a granular fertilizer, um, how, how weedy is, is it? Because grass, if you've got a grass problem, that grass can quickly overtake that clover and it, it will struggle, you know, but if you, Frost seeded some bare spots every couple of years. That clover plot could last, you know, as long as you want it to. You just kind of maintain it. So, <clears throat> again, there's a time and a place for each one of them. I do not mix these together. But I want to tell you what to watch out for. Okay, if you're shopping for a quality clover blend, this is something you need to avoid. You go to the big box store. You go to the, you know, the big sporting goods store or you find, let's just say, an eight pound bag of clover blend and allegedly it plants an acre. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at the ingredients. You know, obviously there's gonna be coating on it and we do use coating on only one of our white clover blend seeds because we can't get, I like that seed so much and how it performs, I can't get it not coated anymore. They, they only offer it coated and, 
you know, it's not like the whole thing's coated, but I really like the performance of that one particular clover. So we do have one coated seed. The rest of it is just has an inoculant on it. But let's say you go and buy this clover blend. It's eight pounds. Okay. 50% of it is seed coating. Okay. So now you theoretically only have four pounds of clover. Okay. It's got 30 to 50% bursine clover in it. Now remember, bursine is an annual. It is not going to come back after a year. So now you're down to, and let's just say for argument's sake, let's just say you're down to three pounds, okay, of clover that you might be able to utilize for multiple years. Well, some of that's going to be a red clover. Is that a biennial red? So after two years, it's going to peter out. And you might be left with one one and a half, maybe two pounds of a good quality white clover. You paid for eight pounds of clover. You spread eight pounds of the seed blend. And after a year, this bursine, which is very heavy in a lot of these mixes, it just, it's gone. You know, the thing with bursine is it grows quickly. It grows tall. It's got a really nice leaf on it. Again, that's why we like it in the summer blends. It just doesn't come back the following year. So you're paying all that money and two years from now, you're calling me saying, hey, I've planted such and such a seed blend. And my first thought is, is that let me guess it's full of weeds and it's petered out already after two years. Well, there's a reason for that because this petered out after two years, the red, the bursine is gone after one year. So something to think about folks, we do not mix these. We only use white ladinos in our clover blend, clover blend plus chicory in our seclusion uh, 360 blend. So something to think about. Recommendations, situations, like I said, there's a time and a place for each one of these, okay? Where do we recommend our white clover blends, our Seclusion 360, our Clover Blend Plus Chicory, and our Clover Blend? We like to see for the Clover Blend and the Clover Blend Plus Chicory, really good soil, good organic matter, maybe 2.4 and above, 2.5 and above, because some of these clovers need a lot more moisture to survive. They are shallow rooted and they don't have a lot of deep roots so they can't go mining moisture. That's why we really don't recommend planting them in sand. Good pH, I really like to see six and above. So if you're, if you're kind of below this, might not be ready for the clover blends. It'll grow, but you know, make it rust color. You might be stunted. You might not taste good to the deer. So I really like, if you're gonna plant a clover blend or a clover blend plus chicory, I really like to have that good quality soil. I like to have the nutrients where they need to be. I like the pH where it needs to be. Now the seclusion was designed with a different clover that's not in here, that can take a crappy soil. It can take a lesser, a lesser pH. In the chicory, um, it's got a long tap root, so it can go look for moisture. So you can do a little bit, you know, maybe low twos, high ones, maybe around six, 5.9. And as long as it gets good sun and some moisture, that Seclusion 360 will survive. The reds, now this is an interesting one because we use, red is, is a real versatile clover uh, here at Northwoods. We do a lot of different varieties uh, of planting and situations with this red. I started out using red as a plow down clover, as a green manure. Okay, like I said, we add it to our grain planting, our green planting, our fall forage will add uh, probably eight to 10 pounds red clover per acre. Our fall forage sandy soil, if it's a soil type that will uh, that will sustain the red clover, we'll add it to that. Our green forage blend will add eight pounds of clover per acre to that as well. But what we're looking for is some food component in the fall, but what we're really looking for is that food component in the spring. You know, you think about it, um, deer come off a hard winter. <laughs> Folks down south, I'm really sorry about talking about the winter and stuff up here, but this may apply to you as well. Deer come off that hard winter they come off winter at all, and one of the first things that greens up is the rye. Right after that, red clover explodes, and that's got great protein, low 20s, and that's something that the deer could use coming right off that winter. Does are, you know, getting ready to have fawns. Bucks are trying to recover from the winter, from the rut, putting antler growth on, and you're offering that protein in the form of that red clover great addition to any one of your green fall plantings. Heck, there's guys that I recommend just over-seeding 
some of their soybeans with red clover just so there's that green food component not only in the fall but in the spring as well. The annual clovers like we talked about the crimson Bersim, I really like the fact that you can create green manure at this. You know, there's so much talk about no tilling, regenerative egg, you know, being soil healthy, soil conscious, and that's true. Um, Crimson is probably one of the biggest producers of organic nitrogen that you can use once it's terminated. And we'll use probably eight to 10 pounds of crimson clover in addition to our soil builder. Again, like I said, I really like some bursine clover with the oats and the peas as a plow down. Again, I haven't planted that mix in a couple of years. We've switched over to our soil builder. But I like the annuals as a nitrogen producer in soil building uh, plantings. Now, uh, one of the things we've been doing lately is we'll add maybe four pounds, six pounds an acre to our brassica blend. And it's just another form of food if they start getting on the brassica really heavy. Plus, it's another organic nitrogen builder. So, and then you folks down south, that crimson clover can come back the following year once the brassicas are, are dead, they're eaten to the ground, and you've got that green food source coming back again the following year. So, we like annuals in our soil building, and then in addition to possibly a brassic planting. Not very much, though. I also like these clover blends in kill plots because of, and I'm going to talk a lot about that, this word this fall in these, in these uh, videos, regeneration. What do I mean by that? It's kind of like when you mow your lawn, um, you mow the grass and about a week later, 10 days later, 14 days later, you got to mow it again. You know, if you've got better soil, you got inputs, you got good moisture, uh, plenty of sun, you might have to mow that grass six days later. You know, if you kind of crappy soil, we're in a drought, might not have to mow as much. But we want good soil. We want those plants growing as fast as they can. And as the deer eat them, they're growing back quickly. So, but a lot of it's going to have to do with how much sun's getting to the kill plot, what kind of soil condition the kill plot's in, how much moisture this kill plot gets. And that could be the location. You could be up on a ridge or you could be down in the bottom where the down in the bottom holds moisture a lot better. But what I like about this is that you can go in and plant this kill plot September, August, and then just walk away. You don't have to go in there and overseed anything. You know, I really don't like overseeding my food plots. Once we get into September, I just don't want to go near my food plots. So I really like, you know, if you've got really good soil, our Seclusion 360, Clover Blend plus Chicory, Clover Blend. You know, even, even though we sell those in the, uh, the Clover Blend, the Clover Blend plus Chicory in a half acre bag, you can plant it on an eighth uh, acre microplot as long as it's got good sun. Now, something to talk, think about, and we talked about this in a different video, if you've got a kill plot where there's a lot of trees around it, one, you're going to be limited on sunlight, but two, is that food plot, that little kill plot, hunting plot, is it going to be drowning those clovers and leaves? So, it's something to think about. You know, it, it, it is a great planting for those kill plots, but let's make sure we've got the situation that's going to allow a successful clover plot and we're not drowning it in leaves or we're not starving it for sun. But if you've got a situation where you can plant clover, great kill plot planting. How do we plant? How do we recommend planting? <clears throat> and again, we're talking strictly planting this fall in preparation for this food plot, this clover plot to be there the next few years. So obviously get a good kill, get a good spraying done, even two if you have to. Make sure you've got a good kill because if you can take care of the weeds now, odds are when that clover is off to the races in 2024 spring, it's going to go ahead of those weeds, choke it out, and it's going to be hopefully a weed-free food plot. But what do we recommend? Get a good kill on the, on the, on the weeds. Uh, you might have to scratch the soil up a little bit. Um, one of my favorite plantings is we'll do the perennial clovers at eight to 10 pounds an acre. Uh, if you're doing annuals, it's 10 to 12. If you're adding it to say like a fall forage blend or a fall forage sandy soil blend, usually around eight to 12, or I'm sorry, 10 to 12 pounds per acre. We like when we're trying to establish our clover blend, clover blend plus chicory, uh, the seclusion, you can back this rate down a little bit because the chicory grows so fast. 
We'll do a mix 50-50 rye and oats, 75 to 100 pounds an acre as a nurse crop, but it also, because the oats is such a great fall attraction and it grows so quickly, that becomes instant attraction to that food plot. I mean, after three weeks, those oats could be five, six inches tall and that clover is just popping out of the ground and it's just, it's like a golf course, not much food value there. But if you are counting on hunting on that food plot or you're counting on that food plot to be part of your program, uh, the overall habitat program, you're going to want some food growing there quickly. Rye and oats is a great nurse crop, but it's also a great fall attraction while that clover is growing. Fertilizer. Now, we, we recommend a soil test, okay, because we want to make sure we know what your phosphorus level is, your potassium level. We need, we need to know that. But without seeing a soil test, and this is guessing, you know, people are going to, oh my God, it's too much or that's not enough. Without seeing a soil test, usually it's 100 to 150 pounds of a low nitrogen 624-24 or a 920-30, okay? Again, that's without seeing a soil test. We highly recommend. Go get those soil tests now. You're really probably not doing much on the property right now. You got the 4th of July weekend coming up. Go grab some soil tests. See what we're dealing with. That way, if you call us, we can determine, do we want to do the clover blend or do we want to start out with red clover? So, you know, and actually, I kind of missed this point back here uh, with the red clover. We recommend the red, if you've got, Folks that want to put a perennial food, I'm sorry, a perennial clover plot on their property and their soil just isn't ready for it, we'll recommend they start out with red clover. Again, it's a biennial and you will have to seed it, frost seed it or spring seed it to keep it, to keep it going every couple of years. But if your soil is low in pH, you've got clay, um, one of the tracks we race at, uh, a couple of times a year, the racetrack has surrounded by a clay horse track and they've not raced on that clay horse track in many, many years, but there's red clover growing anywhere, any, all over the place on that, on that horse track. So red clover does extremely well in some clays, but let's say you're not ready for our good clover blender or clover blend plus chicory. So we'll establish that food plot, that clover food plot, with red. We'll get the red growing. You can work on your soil pH. You can work on the organic matter. And once those numbers are correct, where it can sustain the white clover and sustain it to where uh, it's reaching its full potential, you can frost seed the white clover blends into that red clover. So that's where we would use red. I'm sorry, I just kind of slipped my mind, but um, just wanted to get that in there. You can have, if you've got crappy soils, you can have a perennial clover plot. You just might, you might have to start it out with red. Okay, here we want to show you how versatile the red clover is. Now, this was just mowed yesterday, so it's not really thick and lush, but it's, it's pretty thick right now. And we're on the bottom half of our food plot in the backyard. Um, you look to the north, it kind of goes up the hill. All right. But you see how thick this red clover is. This was established last year with fall forage, and this is going to be plowed under for brassicas. But now you go up on this clay knob, and this is really bad soil. This is dry, hard clay ground. And you see how well the red clover is doing. If you were in a situation where you had a lot of clay in your ground and you wanted to establish a clover plot, this is where we might suggest starting with red clover and eventually transitioning to white. But you can see all the way up on that clay knob, it's doing really well. And the, the deer love it. So you can see that red clover growing up on that clay knob. It's doing quite well. It's nice and lush. It's providing good food and it's doing extremely well down on the bottom half of our food plot. So red clover, great way to start a perennial clover plot on your property if you've got crappy soil, if you can get the soil adjusted to where it'll sustain a white clover, you can eventually frost seed or overseed white clovers into that red clover. But that's how we like to plant it. I like cereal grains with our clovers, instant attraction. It's going to let that clover develop the root system and come out of the ground running in 2024. <sighs> Number five, <laughs> you get asked this a lot. 
got asked this a couple of times this week. John, if I plant your clover blends, any of your clover products, I'm worried I'm going to create a dough factory on my property. <laughs> Folks, the dough factory theory is a solution that's looking for a problem. Let me repeat that. The dough factory theory is a solution that's looking for a problem. There's so much more to it than just this. Okay. I, I don't know what else to say, you know, so I hope this helps. I'm really looking forward to doing these, this video series. We've got brassicas. We're going to talk about a lot of misconceptions about brassica, uh, our greens plantings, what we want to do with our greens and our grains that's coming up. There's so many things we want to talk about. We just want to clear the air because folks it's coming. The nonsense is coming and we want you to be well informed to make your food plot decisions. Whether you're planting Northwoods products or using somebody else's and you just got some questions and hopefully these helps and this helps answer your questions. So if you've got questions, by all means, ask them in the comments below. We've got another video coming in a couple of days. Thanks for watching folks. Thanks for helping our channel grow and we'll see you in a few days.